Yeah, and if you're raging, you can change vote to surrender. Uh, you can actually just go ahead and bind that to left click. Uh, that way, you know, if you're really frustrated in the game, you can just go ahead and spam this and see if your teammates will let you out. What's up, everybody? Uh, this is going to be my UI and settings guide and casting type and keybinds and all that type of good stuff. Just going to try to go over... Uh, basic things in the game, basic settings that most people overlook, especially in guides, and it really makes a huge difference. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I've been a professional support player for four years now? Four years, five seasons, something like that. Um, I currently play support for Team Rival, and yeah, that's pretty much my background. I'm going to try to make this guide as equal for both console and PC as I can since I'm a PC player uh, a good por like good portion of this will only apply like keybind for example only apply to PC so I'll try my best to make it helpful for everybody but just know that because PC is what I'm familiar with it'll probably be slightly more helpful for a PC audience so I'll start off just by going like basic settings right when you open up the game my goal for these guides will be to cater towards newer players really so just like a good intro for people who maybe are just like first learning how to play smite and then eventually as we move on it'll be you know maybe people who are just starting to get into conquest people who are just starting to learn support since that is like what i'm geared towards obviously and then we'll just move our way up slowly so first thing when you open the game you'll see your settings and all that type of stuff uh, video settings are something that I think people maybe only touch like once or twice and then they really just kind of leave it alone. So I'll go over this a little bit. Again, a lot of this stuff is going to be personal preference. So for example, just because I have mine a certain way and I have mine catered towards having the game perform the best in a competitive environment as I can, that doesn't mean that you're wrong for turning something like world detail up and making your game look prettier. Uh, we'll start with that. I have it on minimum because I think the map looks plenty good. Uh, without it, this will be stuff like the grass or like trees or whatever around the map. It used to be like a, a big joke in previous maps because there would like be crabs on the beach in dueling that you could see super clearly if you turned world, uh, world detail up. There is a lot of cool stuff, but I think just for performance, especially anyone who has an average computer, I think that it could make a big difference. Texture detail. So for me, I have really bad eyesight generally, so I want things to be like pretty vivid so I know what's going on at all times. So I put texture detail to maximum. If you are someone who also has bad eyesight or maybe if your eyes hurt when you're just staring at the game too much, you could turn this down or something I'd recommend doing is getting flux if you're on PC and I don't know if there's uh, other options for that on console maybe you can mess with like the base brightness and everything yeah just make sure your eyes aren't getting strained that's a big deal shadow detail so this is the first thing that's like an actual tip that you could go over is the difference between shadow detail and high and maximum to me isn't really that big of a deal the reason I have it on high is because this is when you can see people's like silhouettes around a corner. So if people are like trying to gank you around a corner and they play the corner too closely, you can actually like see their shadow on the ground sometimes. It'll be way more noticeable with bigger characters. It's uh it's a pretty OP thing. I think having it like completely disabled is bad unless it like hurts your system obviously. Shader quality I don't think really matters that much and particle detail same thing just hurts my eyes otherwise. Uh audio just make sure you can hear game sounds, then you're good. User interface is the first stuff that actually matters. Um, something I see newer players do a lot, and this is a big thing that will help, is they don't have show mana usage selected. And this will save you in a lot of situations in general. It'll help you like clear better. It'll help you plan out like backs better. It'll help you decide like when you want to engage, all that type of stuff. Show mana usage is super opaque because you don't have to like waste your time trying to like hover an ability or second guessing if you have enough mana to like all in somebody you'll know instantly because you can just see it so you should definitely have that enabled show your health i think some people like this a lot some people don't uh it'll just have your health bar above you so that you don't have to look down as much i'll actually try using that i personally have never really liked it but i think it can be good just it'll give you a good idea of how the health bars are as well and how to kind of read them because there'll be 
like one little bar is a hundred health i think so a tank late game will have like a million bars and i'll just give you a good idea of like comparing yourself to other people and like how killable you are all that type of stuff actually uh help tips and map guides can be good if you're new enable crossplay all that good stuff nameplates um i personally like to use god names just because i find it really cluttering when there's player names i think that when you use player names it can kind of get in the way and can be hard to tell like what's going on at sometimes this really doesn't matter too much but that's like you know no one should ever use this for example or this like that's just not cool controls so for console this will be a little bit different and i'm not an expert on what the best like sensitivity or anything like that is only thing i really have for your sensitivity is it's worth finding what the dpi on your mouse is which is just like essentially like without getting into it too much it's just how smoothly your mouse will move how many dots per inch which is what it stands for it'll cover so for example uh i'm at 800 right now and i'm like barely moving my wrist and it goes like that and if i turn this up a ton it'll just go all over the place and yeah you don't want to you don't want to do that it can it's also better to have a lower sensitivity in game uh or no that's not what i mean it's better to have a lower dpi and like a medium to high sensitivity than the other way around i think that's true i don't know it, it's something like that but yeah just mess with that the the biggest tip with sensitivity is don't change it every other game a lot of people will do this in fps's like if you guys have played like cod or CSGO or Halo or anything like that, the number one thing that people will do that this will always hurt them is continuously changing your sensitivity because then you really can't get used to anything. Just give it time, try to get used to stuff, that'll help a lot. The other thing in controls that I think is really important is restricted camera pitch. I'd really recommend if you're on PC turning that off. I think console doesn't have the option, I could be wrong on that. Uh, I know they didn't used to, but I'd recommend turning off restricted camera pitch, especially once you're used to your sensitivity. There's kind of no need to have it enabled. Like moving your camera super high or super low can help see Thor alts or rad alts. There's a lot of airborne stuff happening in the game that it could help you with. It could help you see nausea alts, like just anything. Pretty much no reason to have it off. Console does have the option. Okay, good to know. So yeah, if you can get used to it and it doesn't affect your aim too much, then I'd recommend turning that off targeting so this is probably the first support specific thing i have which is your cast mode so your default cast mode will always be set to that for your relics you can go into your skill screen once you're in game on a character and you can change your casting type on a specific character so let's say my cast mode is on quick but i prefer to play a character on all normal cast what you can do is put your cast mode on quick that'll mean all of your relics are on quick cast uh because you can't change individual relics the way you can change gods and then you could put all of your abilities on normal or instant or whatever you want the reason i have it like this and the reason i think it's really good for support is that you have a lot of relics that are very important to have the range uh just available to you so for example horrific sprint shell frenzy are all big area of effect relics and Horrific has a different radius than Shell, which has the same radius as Sprint, and then Frenzy's bigger than all three of them. So because of that, it's really important, I think, to if you need it to be able to pull up uh, that targeter. If you don't need to and somebody is right on top of you, then you just press the button and it'll be a little bit slower than Instant Cast, but essentially it'll be like pretty close to the same thing. And if you ever do want to hover it to make sure you have the range like exactly on everybody, then it'll just be really nice. I find it as a support that it comes in handy a lot more than you would think. I'll go in game to show this part. Something you can do as support, especially because your character models are often so big, is you can kind of use your blink to just like body block people. So let's say there's this Odin bot right here, right? And I want to cut him off and I want to body block him and I'm chasing him. Maybe I don't have CC, but I could just blink in front of him, right? And I can just sit here and try to body block him as long as I can. And that's actually gotten me like a lot of kills in scrims or competitive games. And it's just something that it's nice to be able to do it and not to really have to worry about that type of stuff. So yeah, I would recommend trying quick cast uh, 
as your default for your relics, and then messing with that if you're a support player. And then as I was saying, where's the skill screen? Here it is. And as I was saying, you can go change all of these abilities. So for example, my Kepri 2, even though my default is quick cast, I can just fire it out right away. And then you'll see my one and my three are on normal, and then my two and my four are on instant. So you can kind of change that up for however you want. And yeah, I think it's just something good to mess with. I guess I should go over these. These are also, again, personal preference, distance line, ground target, and reticle. The reason I use arrow for my distance line, or for this, is you can see that little arrow on the ground, and that's where my blink would go. That's like specifically why I have it. It also helps with some abilities, so things like Vulcan Alt that go further than most abilities, or things like Uller 3. Any ability like that, I find that having this little reticle will help, especially if you have bad depth perception, like I was saying. And then this can also just be my blink targeter, so I know exactly where I would go. Um, so yeah, just a helpful little thing with that. Uh, you can use ruler if you'd like. I'd recommend that if you are trying to get used to instant cast, I think the ruler is a really nice tool because it'll tell you exactly the range of abilities and you'll just know it like more intuitively and you won't have to spend so much time guessing like oh can i hit this person you'll just know because you'll see them on the ruler and you'll know that they're in range so that's a good tip if you're trying to switch to instant casting and yeah same thing with the reticle you can use the x if you prefer if you're an adc player and it helps you line up your autos probably a good idea to try out and yeah that's pretty much it i guess now i can go into why i prefer the casting types I do. I think I'm one of the few players who I don't do full instant or full normal or full quick or whatever. I change it up uh, completely based on the abilities and you'll find that a lot of the gods that I play are kind of mixed and it'll be like two or three or one casting type and then uh, the other is a separate casting type. So I'll just kind of go through the god tab. Again, I know Guardian's the best, so I'll just go through that. Um, so for example, there are some abilities where you don't really have to think when you fire them at all. And they're just, so for example, Terra, her one is pretty much the simplest ability ever. It's just a straight line dash. You just look at your three and you dash through it. You don't really need the targeter for this ability. So I put it on instant cast. Whereas with her two, you might want to line up like a wall block to block off a path, or you might want to just line up your stun to be a little more accurate. So I use this on normal cast. And then, you know, same thing with the three in case I want to body block somebody, kind of like I was showing with the blink. And then I'm pretty sure I use the alt on instant just because it's a big circle that you can't miss. So, yeah, it just depends on the ability. I think that the biggest thing that people get caught up in casting types is that even though instant is the fastest and it might, like, be the best for timing... It's really all about what you're comfortable with and what makes the game feel smooth to you. So, for example, if you're one of those players who you'll just spam your left click button, or I think it's right trigger on console, and you'll like auto attack the air while you're trying to fire off an ability, it might be a good idea to switch to instant cast and see how that feels because it'll stop you from doing things like that. It'll stop you from slowing yourself down. You'll see it a lot when people are like trying to jump away or they're trying to dash away. And instead of actually using their ability, they'll like auto attack the air, slow themselves down, and then you can die because of it. So uh, there's a lot of stuff like that. There's things like Kuzumbo 1 or Hoi 1 that I like to use on either normal or quick cast just because when you're clearing in the jungle, it is nice to be able to line that up and make sure that you get the triple bounce on camps. Uh, things like Geb Shield, instant cast on his 2 because... Again, such a big ability, you won't really need to line it up ever. It'll just, you know, you point at them and click. That's kind of about it. So yeah, I would just recommend messing with your casting types. It really depends on the characters. Some characters will interact completely differently, uh, and some won't. You really just have to figure that out as you go. For example, Athena is a good, ex is like a good character where the casting type really doesn't matter that much. If you use your auto on instant cast, you still have to click the person that you want to alt to. It doesn't just insta fire at whoever you're looking at. Same thing with her one. If you use her one on instant cast, it'll still bring up, like you'll charge the ability and then it'll still bring up the dash targeter. So it's pretty much the exact same thing. Whereas her taunt and three are the only things really affected by it. I would just recommend messing with all of the abilities, seeing what you think, um, and not worrying too much about people who say, 
that instant is like the best and if you don't use instant you're wrong i think instant is if you can know the range of abilities and you don't need to like have the precise range on something then i think instant can be the best but again it's really like if you're comfortable that that's what matters the most for example cerberus one i use it on normal cast because even though i'm sure it's fine on instant it just is nice sometimes to make sure that they're kind of in the sweet spot of your one where it's going to stun and i think that it's an ability where the difference between hitting all four of the the projectiles versus hitting like only two or three and not get in the stun is such a big deal that I think it's really good to make sure that you're being precise with it. So uh, I would just think about it on each character that you play. Maybe none of the guardians. None of the guardians. I guess honestly, like Osiris would be okay. This part's gonna get cut out, obviously. Yeah, I'm just gonna take a take a break from talking a ton.